Hello Egyptians! So have you ever asked yourself what in the world is written in the temples of ancient Egypt and how 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 does that work? Like how, how the hieroglyphs works? Uh, how can I write my name in hieroglyphs? Well, all of these things you're gonna know until <laughs> if you make it to the end of this video. So yeah, uh, I've been reading a few things and uh, studying a little bit, and this is a short introduction to hieroglyphs. So yeah, don't. Uh, so thank you for the. I just wanted to say thank you for the uh, like a hundred uh, average views that the videos are doing, and for the almost 50 subscribers we have. And uh, please, at the end of this video, reach out to me with a screenshot or with a picture of your name written in hieroglyphs and I can correct it uh, if you like so um, yeah so if you like the video then like the video and if you like to subscribe because we're gonna go so many we're gonna do so many things in this channel so yeah okay so let's begin So here we are, and so this is um, this, uh, probably, I mean I'm not an expert of hieroglyphs, so this is a short introduction, um, but so I will begin with a little bit of context and then we go through the details. So hieroglyphs in is, is a Greek name, hieroglyph, and it means the sacred carved script, and it's not, for, it's not random as a name because it was found uh, as a carved on stone uh, language and um, and the, the, the Egyptians themselves call, they called it the, this like these symbols uh, they call them um, medu nature so, yeah I found this information which means divine words so again it's like this sacred uh, kind of language and it's so it's so it's so cool <laughs> already <laughs> and um, so you got to, we, know, we got to know that uh, the language that they use hieroglyph and the hieroglyphs are the way they wrote the, 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 their language, the ancient Egyptians. And the ancient Egyptian as a language stretch for from 3200 years uh, before Christ BC uh, until like the middle of the first millennium after Christ. So it's like kind of pro like something like 4000 years and obviously it does change over time but to be a 4000 years uh, long language it doesn't change much so you have like ancient Egyptian and middle Egyptian and you know they, they have different way of uh, writing but it's too much for me to know at this point so uh, I can condense a little bit to the ancient one, the most ancient one, and uh, and then the one that was used in the old kingdom, for example. And uh, what you can what you can tell is that it's been um, so what so basically you could find the hieroglyphs uh, you could find ancient Egyptian wrote in three different forms. Uh, one is the hieroglyph form, which you know is the hieroglyphs everyone knows. Then you have the hieratic, which is a more cursive way of, uh, of, of, of writing, but was just used from, um, was just used by the priests uh, to write letters and things like this. And then you have from actually, actually this last form of writing, which is the demotic, it's, uh, it's not the old kingdom, it's really like the Greek times. So let's not consider that. And we're not going to consider even the hieratic, so we'll just stick with the hieroglyphs, because already in the hieroglyphs there are there is a lot of things already. So in the in the hieroglyphs, there are uh, three main things we need to know. So first uh, is the hieroglyphs are composed by um, let's I mean, yeah I I ideograms okay 
Uh, so the ideograms are, let's, I mean, the figures that represent uh, both the mean, the literal meaning of that symbol, or it can represent an act. So these are the ideograms, and then we have the phonograms, which represent sounds, and actually the sounds are never, they never represented vo vo vowels. So the voc like you know a, e, o, those are not, and have never been written, and these phonograms they are divided in you know you can find like single phonograms which you know like M for example the letter the f the, the the sound M, or the sound uh, ny which is G and N, it's uh, bilateral, so it's composed by two. And then trilateral is like, I don't know, PSD, you know, PSD, PSD. So, anyway. And, um, and so this is what we need to know. And, uh, for example, um, like, you take... Uh, ah, and then we need to know what... The, the, the other thing we need to know is the, 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 the determinatives that exist. So, for example, if you, if you have uh, a series of hieroglyphs, uh, it might not tell you enough to understand what what he's saying because they used the, the ancient Egyptian used uh, what the, what is called determinative so they put another symbol to close the sentence or the actual word to give the context to what was before that so you could understand the whole thing so the word is composed by the hieroglyphs plus some most of the times plus the determinative and the determinative sometimes is self concluding so sometimes you can just read the determinatives and uh, get the meaning of the whole you know paragraph so this is kind of what i what i figured out and now you how should you read it from right left top bottom so yes so in uh, in our culture we read from right left to right yeah, and then um, in Arabic, uh, in a, in the Arab countries, they read from right to left. In China, from top to bottom. The Egyptians could read and write in all of in the whole three of them, in all of the three directions, and uh, just not from bottom up. This is not. It was not an option. And so, if you find, how do you know how to read it? Well, if you find figures that points to the left then you should read it from the uh, left to right in the opposite direction to what it's uh, to what the figures are looking towards uh, and uh, and vice versa and uh, so i think like this being said there has been uh, I mean, Egyptologists and uh, people, experts, let's say, they have been through the hieroglyphs obviously since like 200 years. It, it was in the Rosetta Stone was uh, was translated uh, by Champollion in 1822, so 100 years ago. Ah, 200 years ago, which is cool. Uh, and then uh, 100 years ago was the Tutankhamun tomb was was discovered. And this year, uh, Egypt wants to build the Grand Egyptian Museum. It's gonna be like concluded, let's say, completed in November. So they, every, every hundred years, uh, something big happens. Anyway, so the hieroglyphs, um, uh, you know, the phonograms have been figured out. The most common phon phonographs have been figured out to be like kind of 25. So they are kind of similar in number. Uh, uh, in relation to our alphabet but let's not forget they didn't have vowels and uh, yeah and um, and the, but the hieroglyphs in general are like I don't know 4,000 uh, I, I, I wrote it here somewhere but yeah over 6,000 so like, you know. but anyway but so the um, what so based and the, the only thing we need the, the last thing we need to know before you actually go to an exercise to write your name is that you don't translate the letters of your name uh, correspondently from the letter 
what you do, you translate first your name into how you pronounce how you pronounce it your name, and from that you find out you take away the vowels and you find the most accurate um, you, the most accurate hieroglyph corresponding to the sound of the of your uh, name let's say um, so that's how it works and so for example if, it, if we take my name is Leonardo as you know <laughs> so it's Leonardo the for example you take Leonardo and you will say is made how do you pronounce it? It will be like L I O N R D O. So Leonardo, okay? But they didn't have the sound of L, for example. And so in this case, what's been found out is that you can use the R. So it, so again, if we were to write now is Leonardo, right? But they didn't even have the I or the, you know, so they use the Y, the, 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 the sound of the Y. So it would be like uh, Rayonardo, something like that. And uh, also there was no need for the O, uh, since there was not, you know, the vowels were not there. So you can take the O off from the name. And what you what you what you're left with is the letter R. Sorry, R Y N R D. So Leonardo, Leonardo, they would pronounce it. We don't have any idea how they pronounce it, but they, based on what we know, they would pronounce it Leonardo. Plus, you need to add a symbol, which is the determinative, that tells. What's what's that Leonardo was, and uh, since I'm a man, you will put the symbol of a man, the hieroglyph of a man. So it would be Leonard plus the symbol of the man, the hieroglyph of a man. And so if you were to, for example, if you are, if you were to write a sentence, a short sentence, Leonardo visited Egypt, you will do, you will write it, Leonard plus the the man symbol, hieroglyph, visited, uh, plus the walking symbol, Kemet, which is the original name of Egypt, plus the symbol of a country, of a place. Uh, and so, if I and if you were a pharaoh, you will have your name into a cartouche, uh, inscribed into a cartouche, just if you are a pharaoh. Which is my case. <laughs> no, so yeah. And so at the end, uh, you, how would how would Leonardo visited uh, Egypt look like? Well, first of all, you would pronounce it Leonardo visited Kemet, something like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a, you know. So Leonardo visited Kemet, Kemet, uh, and you would write it uh, with. Um, with the following uh, hieroglyphs. So, Leonardo will be the symbol of the mouth, plus the feather of mat, plus the water symbol, and plus again the, the mouth, and plus the hand, the man symbol, and then visited will be uh, visited, which is the bird, one of the birds, uh, like a chicken, I think. Then this strange line with two more lines, <laughs> and then the T uh, will be this like I don't know half a moon or something like that, and then the D is the is the hand again, plus the symbol of walking. Then you have Kemet, which will be uh, this half uh, half like a I don't know like a T like a T cup. H will be like a sort of a labyrinth. M, which is this owl, and T is this half, uh, I don't know, half moon thing, and then the symbol of the country, and so and you would read it from left to right in this case if you because you you know the, all the symbols points to the left, you will read from left to right. So this is as far as I've got <laughs> in terms of uh, hieroglyphic skills. 
But there is so much to, to, to obviously, this is just a b super brief introduction to the topic. And, uh, guys, please, send me your, uh, your name written in hieroglyph, then we can correct it. I can correct it for you if, if, he's, if, you know, if, he, if he's not correct. But uh, I'm gonna leave you here um, the correspondence. The, so you, I'm gonna leave you here the, like, the main phonograms corresponding that corresponds to the to the let some let some some sounds of letters and um, so you can exercise uh, I mean just just to you know just do your name and then uh, send it back to me please uh, you can comment and I you know we can exchange uh, the number or I can give you my email it's fine and yes and uh, yeah, if you, uh, this was a pretty straightforward, and there is this mosquito still. <laughs> uh, this was a pretty straight, straightforward video, and uh, I hope uh, it's funny. You know, it's fun. It's a fun video to do. And uh, if you like the video, again, uh, guys, if you like the video, don't forget to like. If you like to subscribe, please subscribe, because you helped me to to this journey, which I'm I'm really happy to to still doing this, and uh, it's. Uh, yeah, every you know, it's it's really nice. And the next time we're gonna do a video. I I always announce to do videos, but I don't know. I don't know what's gonna come next time. Uh, I really would like to to jump on the architecture soon, uh, but I don't I don't think we are still ready. I think there is a lot of context to be studied and uh, to to go through before we go to the first uh, pre-dynastic tombs, which is exactly what I would like to to do first in architecture of ancient Egypt. But yeah, still a little bit of, of context and maybe by the summer we do, we start with architecture. Well, have a good day everybody and uh, see you soon. <laughs>